Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Today I want to look, take a look at this. This is uh, from Leisure Arts. You may be familiar with some of their other products that they have. There's Leisure Arts. And this actually is the Diamond Dots Company working in conjunction, conjunction with Leisure Arts to produce some of their Diamond Dots diamond painting kits uh, just for them. So let me open this up. This was given to me at Creativation in a networking event. And, of course, I had to pick this one up because it's a llama. So that says it's a beginner. It's good for beginners as well. So I had an idea of what to do with this. So I need to make sure I got everything out of here. Okay, so... I've done some of these before, and I even have done a video showing me doing a bracelet. So what it has, your, um, your little canvas, which has the design and adhesive on it, has the tray for sorting the little diamonds, and this is the little stylus, which you get a little finger, uh, finger grip on it. This is a wax, so you peel back uh, the top layer, which is this little plastic protection and you just take this, which is hollow, and just squirt it, uh, not squirt it, but push it down into the little wax, and then that enables you to pick up all your diamonds. And then they give you these little bags so that once you open the color of these little diamonds, a little bag, you can put them back in here. And the nice thing is um, you can reuse them for other projects. So I want to take a look at this, and specifically I'm wondering about the size. So here's the image. It says, save the drama for your llama. Um, this instructions on how to do it, but like I said, I am familiar with it. So this, if you'll notice, it actually comes a little scalloped edge here. It comes with uh, a little protector right here because this part here is gummy. Everywhere where there's an image that's uh, that you're going to put diamond dots on, and this is the gummy part. This is not gummy, and this is not gummy. So the actual diamond art is this section right here, just the llama's face and the little flowers, the little flowers right there. So I was looking at that size and here was what I was thinking. I'm going to like lay a heavy book on this so it kind of flattens out for me. And then I was thinking, I don't know what this material is. It's some kind of like a plastic canvas. Printed fabric, it says. I am wondering about the possibility of not even um, saving it in this form, but when it is completed, to cut it out around the image. Could even cut it out ahead of time. It would make it easier. But to cut it out around the image and affix that to something else, like a journal, like to put this on the cover of a book. I don't know yet, so I'm just thinking. So I'm going to start playing around with this. Okay, I have a quick update here. I did all the flowers and I did his ears and so that and a little bit of the outline on his face in the gray. All I have left is the rest of this color which fills in his face or her face. This took me about an hour and a half to do all of that. And so I've done videos before showing, if I can get this open, the one thing I would recommend <laughs> to the company is to get better Ziploc bags. These are so wafer thin as to be really difficult to use. One of the best things to do when you have these is to put it down and then kind of slide it back and forth like this and it and it separates the ones that are flat on their back the ones that are upside down tend to roll down and so now I have a good um, nice lined up beads that are in the right direction they are right set up you're just gonna hold your little stylus I do have the wax on it touch it oops touch it onto one of your beads and put it right down on the color-coded item. And so what I'm doing now, let's see, it's this one here, A03. And it's this little dot. And so everyone that has the dot gets that little bead, actually a little diamond. So I tend to keep my little clear plastic thing on here. If you have cats or pets, you want to keep that on there when you're in between uses. So now I'm going to finish this. 
Okay, I have completed this. I am so thrilled with it. I just love it. And of course, it's just so hard to really get the um, the sparkle in on a video. Anyway, so what I was thinking, I'm not overly fond of the Save the Drama for Your Llama with the blue background. And I was thinking about putting this on maybe a notebook or a binder. I have this one that I got on clearance a while back, and I like the color of it, kind of a mint green. I would, of course, end up covering this up. And this elastic looks like it would be in the way of my design, so I could just cut that off. And a friend just gave this to me, Make Today Great. And I like the size of this. And looking at the llama, I think this might be a better choice, but I'm not sure if the stripes would be okay. I noticed because of having to cut around these gems, I'm going to have to leave a tiny blue border around there. So that also may influence my choice. But in the meantime, I'm wondering <laughs> what is going to happen, how I am going to adhere this. So what I have this excess plastic here. So I think I'm going to cut off some strips and play around. Now I know this, it's some kind of a, it does feel very plasticky. So I'm not sure if I could use heat and bond, you know, would that cause me a problem? Plus it'd be hard to heat with, with these as well. So I have thought of Mod Podge. I've thought of double-sided tape runners. I mean, the whole gamut. So I thought I would play around with this and some chipboard and see where I go from there. So let me get some chipboard. Now, um, this is about the same texture as these two here, although this one is painted. This one is not. Um, and I was thinking if I wanted to maybe seal this or put Mod Podge on it, then I would put Mod Podge on here and see how that works. So I'm going to cut up some strips here and just test these. Now, one thing I thought about, too, is to use the um, a, just a, a permanent adhesive. And we're going to try that. That's going to be our first attempt here. I have a big bottle of Fabri-Fix, but that's slightly more runny than the Fabri-Tac is. So let's, it's a little more watery. I should, probably should cut off this little scalloped edge on these as well, but we'll see. So that would be my first one. We'll try that. We'll try really strong double-sided sticky tape. Okay, I do see the Fabri-Tac is oozing through this material. Um, I know you can't tell, um, but not in everywhere, but just in a few places. I don't think that would cause me any problems. And... I just think that using some these permanent glues might be, uh, oops, got to spell that right. <laughs> I think that it might be difficult because of the fact that you would require so much. And these, you do a little coat there, a little coat here. This one, you wait 30 seconds. Okay, I will hold on. I'll pause the video while I'm waiting. And then while I'm prepping that, I will try the multi-grab 360. This is going to be the, whoops, the better. I have too much glue on there, on, uh, regrettably. And I always do get comments on these, that these are not scientific experiments, and it's not intended to be. Again, thin coat, and this one requires to wait a couple minutes. But this one dries flexible, which would be interesting. Okay, this is time to put the better on here. And then we won't test these for 24 hours to see how they do. And then I think I want to do a Mod Podge. I'll just put that. I won't even put the O in there. Mod Podge. Okay, so let me get the Mod Podge out. So keep in mind, like I said, this is not a science experiment. This is just seeing what I would like to use to put my llama down on my notebook. Okay. Oops. You know what? I need to get some of this cut first. So let me get another piece here. There we go. It's time to put this one here. Oh, that one really holds well. Okay, a little bit of Mod Podge, which is the back. And 
and let's go ahead and try some double-sided sticky tape. Several of you have asked why I put this um, like a cellophane here or um, on my jar and that's just because it's not perfectly airtight and that does help it to get a little better seal on it. Okay, some double-sided sticky tape. We'll try this. Let me go clean my brush. And I think if I were to use double-sided sticky tape, I would do that all over the back of the llama and then cut it out. And that way I could be pretty sure whoops, that every single edge was covered. So let me get this here. Really smooshing that on there. I realize I have excess here. Eh, I don't think it wants to stick to this backing, so that could be an issue. Because like if I were if this were on paper, it would stick to the paper immediately. It doesn't seem to want to stick to this. It just wants to peel off. I'll put D B E double tape. So I'll remember. And this is just now you notice I didn't get this one corner. Uh, down, but we will try. We're going to wait 24 hours and see which one is, suits my desires better for this, and we will get back with you. I want to show you these. These are doing well, every one of them. Now, I could pull this up, the one that has the tape, but what it's doing, it's pulling the cardboard up. It's not actually um, just separating, it's tearing the cardboard. And that I'm going to find with all of these, I'm sure. Uh, Mod Podge doing pretty well. I can pull it. It didn't take as much of the cardboard up. Let's try this one again. See how the double tape just tore the cardboard? Um, and I think that this would do uh, even better on this because it's a higher quality. This is just really kind of junky. The multi grab. Again, it's holding onto the cardboard. The cardboard itself is tearing, so that's a good sign. So all of these did really well. I don't think I'm going to use the Mod Podge because um, it's separating instead of tearing the uh, cardboard up with it. All of these seem to be viable options. I did notice that with the Better and the Multi-Grab, but especially the Better Ultimate Adhesive, I have lumps under here. Now that is my fault because they give you a little um, palette, um, kind of a palette knife, to spread it around so it would be thin. So that would take care of any lumps. You would put it on, spread it out. Same with the multi-grab. I would do that as well. Um, I think uh, for ease of use and because of how much I have, I might just use the Fabri-Tac. Uh, I think the Fabri-Tac has the best result for me for this particular product. Um, so the next thing I need to do is to cut that out. And then I can lay it on these, um, my projects here to see which ones I which of these uh, notebooks I like uh, so I'm oh boy this is nerve-wracking though <laughs> cutting into this first thing I'm going to do is cut it down to size so I don't have all this floppy stuff in my way now I have a good pair of sharp pointy scissors but I don't want to use them because they're for paper and um, if you're a scissor um, snob like I am you don't want to use your paper scissors on things that are not paper. So like I said, I'm going around these uh, and this is going to leave a little bit of a blue border, not much. Okay. So here's what I meant. Now that I've got that cut out, I can see what it's going to look like, how much room it's going to take, and whether I like it on that background. I'm usually one that doesn't like a busy background if I have a busy embellishment. So I would tend to go with this one more than this one. And this one has more of a smooth surface. So the double tape um, would work well um, because it's a nice smooth surface and it won't pull off. So I haven't tested the Fabri-Tac on something like this. 
So it may change my opinion of what I'm going to do. And the question is, do I still want to use this? I can if I move him over just a little bit like that. And then if this elastic, which they tend to do, if it ever, um, if it ever breaks or gets stretched out, I could just cut it off. So I want to lay this down and I'm going to do this to get the rings up off of there. So I have a nice surface to work with. And I'll probably do this to give myself some added uh, strength here, like that. So, um, if I were doing it on the the cardboard, I think I would go ahead and use the Fabri-Tac. This is more absorbent. I think I'm going to go with the double tape. Hard to say. No. Okay, decision made. I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac. So, here we go. Okay. And I think, you know, I'm going to squirt this on and kind of rub it around a little bit so that I have um, a little more smooth appearance on it. I remember I said I was going to put it a little bit toward the left so that that gold band could go around there. Now, Fabri-Tac sets up pretty quickly. Now, how cute would that be with llama paper clips sticking out from the inside? <laughs> Isn't that adorable? Um, another thing I could do, just thinking right here. This does go up really high. I still might be able to punch a little bit of a hole here to hang charms on it if I want. Not absolutely sure if I would be able to get a tool in there to do that. Um, but anyway, I think that is really turned out well. Um, let me think about this and see if I want to put any more like embellishments on there. That is so cute. Okay, so I uh, had to walk away and come back. I love it. Um, normally, I would feel like I would want to add some, maybe some silk flowers here and there to really bring this out into 3D. But the problem is, it's um, the diamond dots. And I want it to sparkle, so I don't want to cover that sparkle up with any kind of silk flowers. So for now, I think I'm just going to work on the spine I have gone through my stash and I have played with everything I have and nothing, nothing seemed to work out until I found this, which was a paper studio ribbon, which I got on clearance and it's a paperish, it's kind of a weird feel to it. So it feels like it's, I don't know, kind of faux leather on maybe a paper type thing. And I was looking at this and playing around about putting it here and I noticed that it almost perfectly goes over these two little um, rivets right there. So what I think I'll do is make this a little extra long, cut that off there, and then I'm going to glue this on with my Fabri-Tac and cut off the excess. So it's gonna take a little bit of playing around here kind of straighten that out a little bit but uh, I do want to put something under my work and this is for another project here which you will see soon the word simplify so actually this is good cardstock so I think what I'll do is use the rest of this underneath my work There we go. I love that that brings a little extra pizzazz to it without overwhelming it. I didn't want to do anything that was really going to take away from the front here. Now, I also I have been putting some papers in here. I've got some miscellaneous papers and llama papers that were gifted to me by a friend. And I will show you how I punched the six holes out in a video coming soon. And it was a lifesaver, let me tell you. I was had visions of having to punch six holes out of, eat, hand punch holes out <laughs> one at a time by hand. 
and I found this little tool that's really uh, helping me a lot. So this I love. I love the llama. I think it's adorable. Um, if he had some sort of a neck here, I might think about putting a bow. I keep saying he. Uh, I might think about putting a bow on the neck, but there is no neck. And I think what throws me off, too, about a lot of decorations is this, because I had some fringe that I thought would be really cute to drape off the bottom here, but this would just be difficult to work with. So I, at this point, I'm going to leave it as it is. I do love it, and I'm happy with it. I'm really thankful for this uh, Diamond Dots thing. I think it is so fun. I was really tickled to, tickled to see they had a llama. Thank you so much for watching.